Hello everyone, welcome to our video on Six Sigma interview questions. We have put together a comprehensive guide to help you prepare for and ace any Six Sigma interview. If you are interested in improving your chances of securing a job in Six Sigma field, this video is for you. So why should you learn about Six Sigma interview questions? Firstly, Six Sigma is a highly sought after skill that is in demand across many industries from manufacturing to healthcare to finance. This means that if you have Six Sigma expertise, you'll have a leg up in the job market. And secondly, understanding the Six Sigma interview process can help you avoid common pitfalls and stand out from other applicants. With our video, we will prepare you for any Six Sigma interview you might encounter and help you develop the necessary skills to stand out from the competition. So whether you are looking to enhance your current skills or develop new ones, our video on Six Sigma interview questions is a must watch. The information you will learn will give you the knowledge and confidence to thrive in any Six Sigma interview and potentially open doors to a whole new world of career opportunities. So what are you waiting for? Watch our video on Six Sigma interview questions now and start preparing for your next big interview. Having said that, if you want to become a Six Sigma expert, then Simply Learn's postgraduate program in Lean Six Sigma Management in collaboration with Eisenberg, UMass, Amherst and KPMG will be the right option for you. This Lean Six Sigma course is targeted towards professionals who want to pursue quality management as a career or want to master the continuous improvement frameworks, Six Sigma frameworks and agile management practice. You will work on capstone projects from 6 domains, 3 Harvard case studies, 17 hands-on projects and 18 simulation exams. With this Lean Six Sigma certification, you will master industry relevant Lean Six Sigma skills. You will learn core quality management skills like Lean Management, Agile, Lean Six Sigma with Harvard Business Case Studies and Group Capstone Projects powered by KPMG in India. So why wait? Enroll today and take your career to the next level in the field of quality management. Course link is added in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. Now before we discuss some important Six Sigma interview questions, firstly let us understand what Six Sigma is. Now Six Sigma is a data-driven methodology and set of tools aimed at improving business processes by minimizing defects, reducing variation and achieving near perfect levels of quality and efficiency. Now it involves rigorous analysis, statistical techniques and a structured problem approach to identify improvements and maintain control over processes. Well it sounds too technical right, so let's just understand in a simple way. Now imagine you are at a bakery and you want to eat your favorite and most delicious cupcakes. But sometimes the cupcakes may come out too dry or maybe too sweet sometimes. Very much frustrating right? Now well Six Sigma is like having a secret recipe to ensure you bake the best cupcakes every single time. It's a special approach that helps businesses reduce mistakes and improve quality in their processes. With Six Sigma, you measure everything precisely and analyze data to find the root cause of the problems. Then with this knowledge at your disposal, you make improvements and set up controls to prevent those mistakes from happening again. So without any further ado, let us directly discuss some of the major interview questions that you might face in your next interview on Six Sigma. So first on the list we have what is Six Sigma and why it is important. Now Six Sigma is a data driven approach and methodology for process improvement and problem solving. It is a disciplined and statistical approach to process improvement that focuses on reducing defects and variability. It utilizes various tools and techniques to identify and eliminate the root causes of the problem. So the main aim of Six Sigma is to minimize defects and variation in business processes to high levels of quality and efficiency in order to achieve them. Now the second question is, can you explain the key principles of Six Sigma? Now the key principles of Six Sigma include various methodologies like customer focus, process improvement, data driven decision making and teamwork. Now, customer focus means understanding and meeting customer needs and expectations. Process improvement involves systematically analyzing and enhancing business processes. Data-driven decision making emphasizes the use of statistical analysis and metrics to drive decisions. And finally, teamwork promotes collaboration and involvement of all stakeholders in process improvement efforts. Now, the next question is, what do you understand about the term DMAIC? Another crucial question in the concept of Six Sigma. Now DMAIC is a structured problem solving methodology used in Six Sigma projects. It stands for define, measure, analyze, improve and control. So it is a step by step approach for process improvement. It begins with defining the problem and project goals followed by measuring current process performance and collecting data. Now the next steps involves analyzing the data to identify the root cause of the problems and implementing solutions to improve the process. And finally establishing controls to sustain the improvements altogether confined as DMAIC. So the next question is, what is the purpose of using statistical tools in Six Sigma? Now, 
Statistical tools are used in Six Sigma to analyze data, identify patterns, measure process performance, and make data-driven decisions. These tools provide a systematic and objective approach to analyzing data and making informed decisions. They help in identifying trends, patterns, and relationships within the data which can guide process improvement efforts. Now, some of the examples of statistical tools used in Six Sigma include control charts, hypothesis testing, process mapping, Pareto charts, regression analysis, design of experiments, or DOE. Next question on the list we have is explain difference between DPU and DPMO. Now, DPU or defects per unit measures the average number of defects per individual unit, while defects per million opportunities or DPMO measures the number of defects per 1 million opportunities. DPU is a simple measure that counts the average number of defects found in each unit of a process. It is calculated by dividing the total number of defects by the total number of units. Well, on the other hand, DPMO is a normalized measure that provides a standardized way of comparing defect rates across different processes or organizations. It is calculated by multiplying DPU by 1 million and dividing by the total number of opportunities for defects in a process. So those are some of the main differences between DPU and DPMO. Well, the next question on the list we have is, what is the difference between Six Sigma and Lean? Now, the interviewer wants to know whether you have a proper knowledge on how Lean and Six Sigma are different from each other and this is why they might be asking you this question. So, the answer for that would be, while both Six Sigma and Lean aim to improve process performance, Six Sigma focuses on reducing defects and variation, whereas Lean focuses on eliminating waste and improving flow. Now, Six Sigma and Lean are two complementary methodologies often used together in process improvement efforts. Six Sigma primarily aims at reducing defects, errors and variability in processes while Lean focuses on identifying and eliminating waste and non-value added activities to improve efficiency and flow. While both methodologies share common tools and principles and can be used in conjunction to achieve even greater results. So these were some of the main differences between Six Sigma and Lean. Well moving ahead the next question on our list is what is the role of a Six Sigma Green Belt? Now a Six Sigma Green Belt is a team member who assists in process improvement, projects, gathers and analyzes data and participates in problem solving efforts. So basically a Six Sigma Green Belt is a trained individual who works as a part of a Six Sigma project team. They support the project leader that is Black Belt in gathering and analyzing data, conducting process analysis and implementing improvement solutions. Green Belts often lead smaller scale improvement projects and play a vital role in implementing and sustaining process changes. So moving ahead, the next question on our list is, what is the main difference between type 1 and type 2 errors in hypothesis testing? Well, type 1 errors occurs when a null hypothesis is incorrectly rejected, indicating a insignificant effect when none exists. Whereas, type 2 error occurs when a null hypothesis is incorrectly accepted, failing to detect a significant effect. Now in hypothesis testing, type 1 error, which is also called as an alpha error, refers to the rejection of a null hypothesis when it is actually true. Well, this error indicates a false positive result, suggesting that there is a significant effect when in reality there isn't. Now, type 2 error on the other hand is also called a beta error, occurs when the null hypothesis is accepted despite it being false. Now, this error indicates a false negative result, failing to detect a significant effect that exists in reality when there is actually one in reality. So moving ahead, the next question we have is what is process map and how it is useful in Six Sigma? Now a process map is a visual representation of steps, activities and inputs outputs of a process. It basically helps in understanding and analyzing process flow, identifying inefficiencies and finding areas for improvement. Now a process map which is also known as a process flow chart or a process diagram provides a graphical representation of the sequence of steps in a process. It helps in documenting and understanding the flow of activities, inputs and outputs within a process. Now process maps are useful tools in Six Sigma for identifying bottlenecks, redundancies and non-value added steps, which enable process teams to visualize the current state, identify any improvement opportunities and develop future state maps for process optimization. Well, the next question on our list is explain what is FMEA and its purpose. Now, the purpose of conducting an FMEA is to proactively identify and prioritize potential failures in a process or product, determine their effects and take preventive or corrective actions. Now, the full form of FMEA is defined as failure mode and effect analysis, which is a systematic method used to identify and analyze potential failure modes in a process or product, assess their severity, occurrence and detectability and prioritize them based on their risk. Now, FMEA helps in understanding the potential consequences 
of failures, identifying the root causes and taking appropriate actions to prevent or mitigate the risks associated with these kind of failures. Alright, moving ahead, the next question on our list is, what is the concept of Sigma level in Six Sigma? Now, Sigma level is a statistical metric that measures the capability of a process to perform defect-free work. It indicates the number of standard deviations that can fit within the specification limits. So you can see that it is a measure of process performance in terms of defects per million opportunities or DPMO. It provides an indication of the process capability to produce products or services within the desired specification. A higher sigma level indicates a higher level of process capability and lower levels of defects. For example, a process operating at a six sigma level would have a defect rate of 3.4 defects per million opportunities. Well, the next question we have is what is the purpose of control charts in Six Sigma? Now, control charts are used in Six Sigma to monitor and control process performance over time, detect variations and distinguish between common cause and special cause variations. These are basically graphical tools that help in monitoring process performance over time. You can plot data points against control limits to determine if the process is stable or exhibiting special cause variations. Control charts provide a visual representation of process variation and help in distinguishing between common cause variation and special cause variation. By analyzing these control chart patterns, process teams can take appropriate actions to improve process stability and reduce variations overall. So that was what control charts are and why they are important. Well, the next question on our list is explain difference between attribute data and variable data. Now, attribute data is a qualitative data that describes the presence or absence of a particular characteristic or attribute, while variable data is quantitative data that can be measured on a continuous scale. Now, attribute data is collected by counting the number of occurrences or non-occurrences of a specific characteristics. It is typically represented in terms of proportions, percentages, or count values. Now, examples of attribute data include number of defects, presence of absence of special features, or the number of non-conformances. While on the other hand, variable data is collected by taking measurements on a continuous scale. Now, some of the examples of variable data include length, weight, or temperature. Variable data is typically analyzed using numerical values, such as calculating means, ranges, and standard deviations using some parametric statistical methods. So these were some of the main differences between attribute data and variable data. So moving ahead, the next question is, what is the purpose of conducting a process capability analysis? Now, the purpose of conducting a process capability analysis is to assess whether a process is capable of producing outputs that meet customer requirements and specifications. Now, process capability analysis is performed to determine if a process is capable of consistently meeting the customer specifications. By calculating process capability indices such as CP and CPK, which is very important in terms of conducting a process capability analysis. Now, CPK, which is also known as Process Capability Index, measures how well a process is able to consistently produce output within the desired specifications. It helps determine if a process is capable of meeting customer requirements. Process teams can assess whether the process is capable of producing within specification limits. Overall, process capability analysis helps in understanding the level of variation in the process and identify areas for improvement to achieve desired levels of quality. And finally, on the list, we have what is the concept of Design for Six Sigma or DFSS. Now, Design for Six Sigma or DFSS is a methodology used to develop new products, services, or processes within a focus of meeting customer requirements and achieving high levels of quality and performance. It is a proactive approach to product or process development that emphasizes meeting customer needs and achieving high levels of quality from the outset. It utilizes various tools and techniques such as QFD, quality function deployment, robust design and risk analysis to ensure the customer requirements are effectively translated into product or process specifications. DFSS aims to design products or processes that are inherently defect free and capable of meeting customer requirements and expectations, thereby reducing the need for subsequent process improvement efforts. So these are some of the main or top questions that might be asked in your next Six Sigma interview questions. Now, apart from these, you might be asked some generic questions as well. So let us discuss them, what they are. Now, you might be asked this question, which is how can you ensure the sustainability of Six Sigma improvements? Now, ensuring sustainability of Six Sigma improvements requires ongoing monitoring, standardization of improved processes, effective training, engagement of stakeholders, and a continuous culture of improvement. Well, now to sustain Six Sigma improvements, it is essential to establish controls and monitoring systems to track process performance over time. This allows organizations to detect any deviations or issues and take corrective actions promptly. 
engaging stakeholders at all levels of organization and creating a culture of continuous improvement encourages ongoing participation and ownership of the process. Regular reviews and audits can easily help identify opportunities for further improvements and ensure that the gains achieved through Six Sigma are maintained in the long run. Moving ahead, the next question will be, what are the benefits of implementing Six Sigma in an organization? Now, the interviewer wants to know whether you have a perfect clarity or whether you understand Six Sigma and how you are implementing in a real life for an organization or for that company. So you can say like this. Now, the benefits of implementing Six Sigma in uh, organizations are numerous. It helps in improving the quality of products or services by reducing defects and variability. Now, this in turn leads to increased customer satisfaction and loyalty. By analyzing and optimizing processes, Six Sigma helps in enhancing process efficiency, reducing cycle times and increasing productivity. Now, improved process performance results in cost savings, waste reduction and higher profitability. And additionally, Six Sigma fosters a culture of continuous improvement, teamwork and data-driven decision making which can drive innovation, employment engagement and overall organization success. So the next question is, how would you prioritize improvement opportunities in a Six Sigma project? Well, the interviewer wants to know that now that you have a clear understanding of what Six Sigma is and how you are implementing into the project, well, he wants to further know how can you further optimize improvement opportunities in a Six Sigma project. So you can answer him in this way. Now, when prioritizing improvement opportunities in a Six Sigma project, it is important to consider multiple factors. Now, the impact on customers should be a primary consideration as it aligns with the organization's focus on meeting customer needs and expectations. Evaluating the potential cost savings or financial benefits associated with the improvement opportunity is also very crucial. Assessing the process risk or the likelihood of it and the impact of failures can help prioritize areas that pose the highest risk to the business. And finally, consider the feasibility of implementing the improvements, including resource availability, timeline, complexity, in order to ensure that selected opportunities can be successfully executed. So these were some of the main generic Six Sigma interview questions that might be asked apart from the technical questions. So with that, we've come to the end of today's session on top Six Sigma interview questions. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. Thank you for watching the video guys. If you found this tutorial informative and helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, Thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.